Thank you for joining us for Happy Hour. We are being sponsored by the Institute of Research. I can't even talk this, this evening. Welcome to Happy Hour. We're being sponsored by the Institute of Bioacoustic Biology. It's a research institute. You'll see it flying by here as we go. We're in an old school building in Athens, Ohio. We provide or try to provide information and ideas in support of self-help. And this is an online demo of some of the computer programs that we share with the public. This is our building. It's 9,000 square feet. We have a studio there. I'm actually coming to you from a hidden computer because we really don't want to tell people where we're coming from. I'm getting a little paranoid about that because last week we were blasted. Um, right like minutes before the show. I want to make one small announcement for any of you who have been with us or would like to repeat. I'm going to, thank you, Joe. Um, would like to repeat the class. We're going to be doing that, I think, around, is it the 16th through the 20th? Yeah, the 16th through the 20th, we'll be repeating the five-day show. I'd like to ask you to keep your mics closed, please. Um, and it's going to be about immune system. And we are scrambling to get the new computer program done by then. And it will be about what we're going to be talking about tonight, insulin resistance. But along with that, how a fatty liver affects your immune system and how that also affects diabetes. So happy hour is brought to you every other Tuesday. Let's see if I can put this up. And on the alternative Tuesdays, we do something called Vocal Profiling Live to show you how we're arriving at our conclusion. So this one is about uh, asking for volunteers from the audience. And we already have two volunteers, um, so that's good. And I'm hoping we can get both of these um, filled in here, because for years we've been saying at the Research Institute that adipose fat tissue actually insulates you from poisons and things that your body um, doesn't want to deal with or doesn't have the energy to deal with all at the same time. So when we usually do uh, bundling a lot of extraneous things um, in this show, we're going to try to look at some things quickly. If I can pull this down, I'm having a little trouble finding out where I'm going. So this is under downloads, if I can fix the website as soon as I get off the air. And there is a Bioacoustic Basics booklet there that you can download and it'll show you how to do all of what we're going to be doing this evening. And there's a pastel folder, which is all the instructions on how to do this for yourself or a client so that you can send information to them. But right now, we're going to concentrate on happy hour. A lot of you are giving me recommendations about insulin resistance. Right at the beginning of the show, we ask what download should we put up for free? And uh, when I went to the bottom to look at that download, it's not there. It should be under downloads and um, Richard, do you remember what it says bonus? It would have bonus software here. And it's fatigue this month. We usually change it out on September 1st, but we really couldn't make up our minds what we wanted to do. So I want to share with you as much as I can of a video, a short video, and we may just have to run over the season because we usually don't do any kind of video. We just give you some information. But this video is so well done. I couldn't do it any better. As a matter of fact, he does it a 100 times better than I can. And it's about the ideas of overweight and insulin resistance. So we're going to watch that first and then come back and show you quickly how to use these computer programs. Oh, and now watch this thing not do what it's supposed to do. 
how did this happen to me if I was supposedly doing everything right? If the conventional wisdom about nutrition had failed me, was it possible it was failing someone else? And underlying these questions, I became almost maniacally obsessed in trying to understand the real relationship between obesity and insulin resistance. Now, most researchers believe obesity is the cause of insulin resistance. Logically then, if you want to treat insulin resistance, you get people to lose weight, right? You treat the obesity. But what if we have it backwards? What if obesity isn't the cause of insulin resistance at all? In fact, what if it's a symptom of a much deeper problem? The tip of a proverbial iceberg. I know it sounds crazy because we're obviously in the midst of an obesity epidemic, but hear me out. What if obesity is a coping mechanism for a far more sinister problem going on underneath the cell? I'm not suggesting that obesity is benign, but what I am suggesting is it may be the lesser of metabolic evils. You can think of insulin resistance as the reduced capacity of our cells to partition fuel, as I alluded to a moment ago. Taking those calories that we've taken and burning some appropriately and storing some appropriately. When we become insulin resistant, the homeostasis in that balance deviates from this state. So now when insulin says to a cell, I want you to burn more energy than the cell considers safe, the cell in effect says, no thanks, I'd actually rather store this energy. And because fat cells are actually missing most of the complex cellular machinery found in other cells, probably the safest place to store it. So for many of us, about 75 million Americans, the appropriate response to insulin resistance may actually be to store it as fat, not the reverse. Getting insulin resistance in response to getting fat. This is a really subtle distinction. But the implication could be profound. Consider the following analogy. Think of the bruise you get on your shin when you inadvertently bang your leg into the coffee table. Sure, the bruise hurts like hell and you almost certainly don't like the discolored look. But we all know the bruise per se is not the problem. In fact, it's the opposite. It's a healthy response to the trauma. All of those immune cells rushing to the site of the injury to salvage cellular debris and prevent the spread of infection elsewhere in the body. Now, imagine we thought bruises were the problem, and we evolved a giant medical establishment and a culture around treating bruises, masking creams, painkillers, you name it, all the while ignoring the fact that people are still banging their shins into coffee tables. How much better would we be if we treated the cause, telling people to pay attention when they walk through the living room? rather than the effect. Getting the cause and the effect right makes all the difference in the world. Getting it wrong, then the pharmaceutical industry can still do very well for its shareholders, but nothing improves for the people with bruised shins. Cause and effect. So what I'm suggesting is maybe we have the cause and effect wrong on obesity and insulin resistance. Maybe we should be asking ourselves, is it possible that insulin resistance causes weight gain and the diseases associated with obesity, at least in most people? What if being obese is just a metabolic response to something much more threatening, an underlying epidemic, the one we ought to be worried about? Let's look at some suggestive facts. We know that 30 million obese Americans in the United States don't have insulin resistance. And by the way, they don't appear to be at any greater risk of disease than lean people. Conversely, we know that 6 million lean people in the United States are insulin resistant. And by the way, they appear to be at even greater risk for those metabolic diseases I mentioned a moment ago than their obese counterparts. Now, I don't know why, but it might be because in their case, their cells haven't, haven't actually figured out the right thing to do with that excess energy. So if you can be obese and not have insulin resistance, and you can be lean and have it, this suggests that obesity may just be a proxy for what's going on. So what if we're fighting the wrong war? Fighting obesity rather than insulin resistance? Even worse, what if blaming the obese means we're blaming the victims? What if some of our fundamental ideas about obesity are just wrong? 
Personally, I can't afford the luxury of arrogance anymore, let alone the luxury of certainty. I have my own ideas about what could be at the heart of this, but I'm, I'm wide open to others. Now, my hypothesis, because everybody always asks me, is this. If you ask yourself, what's a cell trying to protect itself from when it becomes insulin resistant? The answer probably isn't too much food. It's more likely too much glucose, blood sugar. Now, we know that refined grains and starches elevate your blood sugar in the short run, and there's even reason to believe that sugar may lead to insulin resistance directly. So if you kind of put these physiological processes to work, I hypothesize that it might be our increased intake of refined grains, sugars, and starches that's driving this epidemic of obesity and insulin resistance, that's for obesity and diabetes, but through insulin resistance, you see, and not necessarily through just overeating and overexercising. Now, when I lost my 40 pounds a few years ago, I did it simply by restricting those things, which admittedly suggests I have a bias based on my personal experience. But that doesn't mean my bias is wrong. And most important, all of this can be tested scientifically. But step one is accepting the possibility that our current beliefs about obesity, diabetes, and insulin resistance could be wrong and therefore must be tested. I'm betting my career on this. Today, I devote all of my time to working on this problem, and I'll go wherever the science takes me. I've decided that what I can't and won't do anymore is pretend I have the answers when I don't. I've been humbled enough by all I don't know. For the past year, I've been fortunate enough to work on this problem with the most amazing team of diabetes and obesity researchers in the country. And the best part is, just like Abraham Lincoln surrounded himself with a team of rivals, we've done the same thing. We've recruited a team of scientific rivals, the best and brightest, who all have different hypotheses for what's at the heart of this epidemic. Some think it's too many calories consumed. Others think it's too much dietary fat. Others think it's too many refined grains and starches. But this team of multidisciplinary, highly skeptical, and exceedingly talented researchers do agree on two things. First, this problem is just simply too important to continue ignoring because we think we know the answer. And two, if we're willing to be wrong, if we're willing to challenge the conventional wisdom with the best experiments science can offer, we can solve this problem. I know it's tempting to want an answer right now, some form of action or policy, some dietary prescription, eat this, not that. But if we want to get it right, we're going to have to do much more rigorous science before we can write that prescription. Briefly, to address this, our research program is focused around three meta themes or questions. First, how do the various foods we consume impact our metabolism, hormones, and enzymes, and through what nuanced molecular mechanisms? Second, based on these insights, can people make the necessary changes in their diets that's in a safe and practical way to implement? And finally, once we identify what safe and practical changes people can make to their diet, how can we move their behavior in that direction so that it becomes more the default rather than the exception? Just because you know what to do doesn't mean you're always going to do it. Sometimes we have to put cues around people to make it easier. And believe it or not, that can be studied scientifically. I don't know how this journey is going to end. But this much seems clear, to me at least. We can't keep blaming our overweight and diabetic patients like I did. Most of them actually want to do the right thing, but they have to know what that is. And it's got to work. I dream of a day when our patients can you know, shed their excess pounds and cure themselves of insulin resistance. Because as medical professionals, we've shed our excess mental baggage and cured ourselves to new idea resistance sufficiently to go back to our original ideal, open minds, the courage to throw out yesterday's ideas that may don't appear to be working, and the understanding that scientific truth isn't final, but constantly evolving. Staying true to that path will be better for our patients and better for science. If obesity is nothing more than a proxy for metabolic illness, what good does it do us to punish those with the proxy? 
sometimes I think back to that uh, night in the ER seven years ago. I wish I could speak with that woman again. I'd like to tell her how sorry I am. I'd say, um, you know, as a doctor, I delivered the best clinical care I could. But as a as a human being, I let you down. Um, you didn't need my judgment and my contempt. You needed my empathy and compassion. Above all else, you needed a doctor who was willing to consider maybe you didn't let the system down. Maybe the system of which I was a part was letting you down. If you're watching this now, I hope you can forgive me. That is an incredible message. And if you can stand to listen to me a bit, um, I'll try to follow up on what he is saying. I, I had to watch this several times, as many of you are posting to me on the chat that you watched this many times and are moved by it several times. And yes, we did have Dr. Davis on the show about wheat belly, but it's not just wheat, it's almost all grains. Um, the barley, oats, rye, um, felt, it's those carbohydrates that we just are not used to eating such refined foods, and that's what's causing this insulin resistance. I put in the chat the link, and I'll put it in again because people are still coming in as you're calling your friends and saying, you need to watch this. I'm going to put the link in the chat again because nobody can see what's been chatted before uh, they come in. So there is a transcript of the show that you can um, link to and pull this down and look at what he's talking about. There is a lot of articles about insulin resistance, the mechanics of it, uh, and this idea that he is talking about too much glucose and also this this energy um, fueling and partitioning, lots of information. I'm going to be digging at this and putting this all in a computer program so it can be added to our insulin resistant information. One of the wonders of this, look, this has been put up since June 2013 and has been seen nearly a million times. This, yes, heartfelt awakening. Wow. Um, I agree with you, Phyllis. So what we're going to do, and, and we may run over, uh, is look at insulin resistance. And we have two people who will volunteer. Uh, Richard, do you want to call me? Do you want to do this on air? It would be pretty good here, isn't it? Yes, you're looking okay, good. good. Okay. This is, you know, this is the... Um, program that we have, and inside this program, there's glucose and insulin receptors, and that's what we see as the main issue, that the insulin receptors will not accept the insulin running around in the system. Um, thank you, Terry. We have, we have two volunteers for this evening, but I think we're going to have to be doing this again and providing it again. So for right now, I'm just going to move this aside. Well, I can't. I'll just accept it then. And I'll move it over here. And as most of you know, we start with Audacity. Audacity instructions are in that little booklet I showed you just at the beginning under Downloads. And all the instructions for doing all of this are there. It's free for any of you. So Richard, we want to take 30 seconds of your voice. And do I have a category? Am I talking about fat or am I just talking? Talk about your weight issues. Okay. Go. I was, even as a young boy, uh, even though I walked uh, through, you know, not through snow, but, but did walk to school and walk home from school and did a lot of physical activity, 
uh, I was always heavy as a kid, and then for years, I just continued to be heavy, stocky. I've, I'm thick by nature, uh, muscular and short and stocky. However, I was fat for years and years and years, and even when I was eating a good diet, uh, actually during the years that I was a chef, I was my thinnest, and that's because I just worked ridiculously long hours, and that's all she wrote. Okay, thank you, Richard. One of the reasons I let this go a little long, because 30 seconds is enough, but at the beginning, it was just too loud. Yeah. So I'm going to chop that out. And we're going to save it. Well, export it, really, Richard. And insulin resistance. We're going to save it in a WAVES file. All these instructions, again, are in that bioacoustic little booklet, 72 pages. Um, Richard, you might want to back off the mic a little bit. We can hear you heavy breathing. Um, so I'm going to just minimize that and then put it in the Abacus program. And this program is waiting for you on downloads also. Uh, it's under both the bonus software and the radiation software. So when we look at our WAVES file, Richard should be right there at the top. And what this program does is change his talking information, his words, from word data into numeric data. If we played this as information, can you see the whole screen or should I make it a little smaller? Nobody's going to answer me here. I can see it. Can you see the whole screen? Well, no, I can see edge to edge, yes. Say that again. I can see edge to edge. Okay, great. I just didn't want to make it too big so people can see what we're doing. We're going to fake a birthday because we're going to move through this very quickly. It's such an important topic. So, wow. male, and um, you're looking at your metabolism, Richard, is that why you're wowing? Yes. So, insulin. Nice resist. arch. Yes, and look at it, how far it is, in, even in the long term. Now, your diet must be better because all of your predictive stuff, what's coming, is all in normal section. So this squiggly line here is Richard's voice from 0 to 1,000 cycles per second. And what this computer program did was reorganize it from his words. Took all those sound bites and put it in order of the frequencies. This gray grid is where Richard's voice should be unto itself. That gray grid moves up and down. So we're going to go up here and ask the computer to pull his points. And pull the points means just give us an in information about what's high and what's low. Now, I don't know if this is going to work because we're supposed to have six highs and six lows. And I don't know how this is set up. Um, and I would really like to go in and take this one. Um, this is inflammation. All this looks like a bunch of ink droppings here. So I'm going to get rid of this one, maybe, because I want to see what this looks like. And all I'm doing is picking out frequencies off here. And I'm going to have to call it high or low, and I really don't know how. Uh, Richard will do more of this later. What we did was collect a bunch of frequencies that the computer decided were very high, which means there's too much energy in the voice, or low. Now, we only have three lows. We may have to come back and fake some lows. I don't know because usually you have to have six highs and six lows. So I'm going to get this little Rubik's Cube down here in the corner, and that will say we want to save this, and I'm going to save it in a file that I prepared, a GNS file, a Genesis file. Now it saved this list of frequencies. 
Next, we're going to open that insulin resistance program. Well, I thought I was. There it is. And it's really simple from here on out to manipulate this information. Now, why did that just change everything all of a sudden? Richard online. There's Richard's data that we put in and the numbers that we chose. Now, all we have to do is hit reports. And I always like to look at things like proteins first because that is really important to what the body's doing. And if we flip up all those reports at once, people freak out. So hit the reports. Adiponectin is high. And adiponectin has a definite relationship for you practitioners. It's a minus one of glucose. So in this case, Richard's adiponectin is not working well. And that helps the body decide what it's going to keep and what it's going to throw away. Insulin sensitizing activity. Yours is high and likely not usable. If I was going to do that formula, Richard, I would combine it with glucose. When you look at glucose by its frequency, and everything in the body runs on frequency, if you look at the minus one and plus one light, which is a formula I'm only talking to practitioners about, it will give you the frequency of insulin. So that's a wonderful set of frequencies that we've been using to help people control insulin, and mainly because there's been threats that insulin is going to be uh, rationed. Insulin may decrease activity of enzymes that destroy. All of this is, is too high. Uh, the GRLA, that's glycine not being used well in your body, so your muscles are going to get stiff unless you're... Um, I shouldn't say it that way. If you sit down for a while, your muscles are going to get stiff. Glucagon-like peptide, glucagon, glycogen, both are things that are stored in the liver until you need them. That's not working right. And then cholesterol-related insulin resistance. So all of these numbers are going to be important to you. Do you have this program, Richard? I do not. But okay. I do have stiff man syndrome because I stand I I stand at a computer most of the day, and when I'm not standing at the computer for 12 or so hours, I'm not walking for two or three hours in between. So I'm either standing or walking most of the day, and then when I and I'm fine. However, when I sit down, I get stiff man syndrome. My hip hurts. My muscles are achy. Standing up, no problem. We can get rid of it with this, and I will send you the SD version with all the frequencies on it once we get through here. Okay, what else would you like to look at? Some of the herbs, because you're an herbalist? Herbs and enzymes. I'm always curious about enzymes and amino acids. Okay, let's look at vitamins, maybe even minerals. Let's look at your note correlate chart, too, because this will tell us mm -hmm. what... Uh, note we should be concentrating on. So we're looking for four, or here's five too. Four or more, so there's a C sharp here. So that deals with the body's ability to absorb things out of your bowel. Mm -hmm. So if you have some kind of bowel cleansing that you can do, uh, three and eight really helps with that. Um, I'm not talking about chelation. For this, but just a good bowel cleanse. And you probably know of an herb, I don't. Mm -hmm. And the other is small body mechanics. It registers a five. So B and C sharp are the issues that we want to look at. So your niacin is not working well. This is one of the things that's translated into nicotinic adenosine diphosphate, NAD, and it works in the Krebs cycle to keep your energy up and running. 
So you want to look at your B3. Also, it retards the development of diabetic. Um, I can't pronounce that word. Neuropathy, that actually should be probably neuropathy. So it's misspelled, or is this something yes. that's looked at? No, because a diabetic neuropathy is actually a term. So I don't think it's nephro. No, it's probably N E U P H. Well, Richard is saying it's about a diabetic and the kidney. So. Yeah. Okay, we'll look it up. Vanadium high. From usable because vanadium would be um, yes. Uh, so people are posting that kidneys are affected by diabetes. Actually, there's a several types of diabetes. One's pancreatic, one's liver, and one's kidney. And not many people have posted or written articles about that. But uh, the kidneys can go into stress also. Vanadium, I think you get this from radishes, and it helps build. Um, your insulin. Zinc is also a constituent of uh, insulin and along with manganese and magnesium. These are needed for the use of creating uh, insulin in the body. Cysteine, hmm. uh, without the extra E in it, is high. May enhance supply of insulin in the pancreas. Now, most of you know, you can go look at that little pink. Um, Folder. It says pastel folder. It has in it a little uh, nutrient assimilation chart, and you'll be able to see what cysteine is, what it does, where it comes from, and you can see that when something is high, it means that the body recognizes that it's usable. But unless Richard is taking this, it's probably not high. So this just means it's not usable. And that's a different formula that we should be looking at. It didn't have any herbs. Nothing came up on the herbs. And do you think because everything's high, there could be a methylation issue, meaning that it's about my assimilation? Because everything was so high. Could be, but I would go right back to those proteins with adiponectin. So okay. all of that deals with leptin and all the things that tell you your body should keep this and throw that out. A lot of people with uh, Indian background or a background where there's feast and famine come out with that kind of issue. There wasn't anything with enzymes. If we check on, uncheck, and just hit enzymes and we report, nothing there. So I would think that maybe you have... Um, you're taking enzymes? You're taking digestive enzymes? Yeah, I take a broad-spectrum plant-derived enzyme. Let's look at chemicals and biochemicals. Because when you're not using amino acids, you want to look at B5. You want to look at some precursors for B5 and coenzyme A. All of those deal with the beginning of the Krebs cycle. Prostaglandins, that tells me that there's inflammation there. Steric acid tells me, because it's high, um, the body needs it to remyelinate. EPA is a form of fatty acids. And DHA, a part of testosterone that you don't want. But it says it prevents insulin resistance, also causes men to lose their hair. Maybe I'm Ooh. thinking the wrong thing. Maybe that's DHT. I'd have to look up DHA and see. So those those came out the same. What is going to happen if Richard doesn't take care of this? Well, these kinds of things are going to come into play. Calcium is going to become a, an issue. Folic acid, which is used to re-energize your DNA. A couple more GR, LA, a couple more receptors. I will put some frequencies to these and send them to you since you're a practitioner. Thank you. Um, maternal diabetes adversary, uh, but all of these tell you bits and pieces about what's going on with your insulin resistance. Do you have a bit of high blood pressure? Uh, not so much. I'm pretty there's, stable. There's a piece in there. 
it's going to mess up your calcium, which if, if those of you who have been with us know, you mess up that calcium and your body just doesn't heal itself right. So I will send that to you afterwards. Any other questions about that? Oh, DHA is a fatty acid um, being posted here. Both of them are essential fatty acids. You know, and carnitine is needed for anybody to lose weight. That's the one consistency with um, not gaining weight or not losing weight, carnitine or the frequency of carnitine is the consistency. And then the um, fatty, the good fatty acids help the carnitine be useful. Steve is posting some good information for everybody about regenerating um, the kidneys. Okay, we're gonna go through the same thing again, but I wanna just do a reminder here. If you wanna go, look at some of these pieces, go to the downloads, and it will be right here and say downloads. It's just a little problem here. This is the booklet. Just click on this and download it. The nutrient assimilation chart, so in Richard's case, you can look up cysteine, and the PASTO folder, and then some of the articles, and they're different for each um, software. Normally, we would open this, we would bundle everything, we'd send it to Richard, but you can watch some of the other happy hours and, and see how to do that because I want to get to Jo. She asked to be part of this. Um, thank you, Richard. Do you have any questions? No, th well, no, thank you. <laughs> yes, okay. but no, thank you. <laughs> okay, Jo, I'm going to open your mic and we're going to do the same thing. You want to open it on your end? Maybe she'll have some problems. Joe, well, I think I, we unmuted and muted at the same time. Joe, you want to unmute your mic again? Okay, can you talk to me? Well, it's muting itself right back. I don't know what's going on there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. That's great. And you're wonderful. Oh, wonderful. So we're gonna Thank open you. we're gonna open this Audacity again and it's all the instructions are in that little booklet. So you're gonna give me thirty seconds of your voice. You ready? Go ahead and start, Joe. Okay, um, the reason that I wanted to volunteer today is because I go through periods where I gain 25 to 30 pounds in less than a month. And it's happened like six times in my life and it just happened again. So I am at my peak of weight and it's frustrating because when this does happen, it just won't come off. It doesn't matter what I eat and it doesn't matter what I eat to try to get it on or not, <laughs> I didn't try to get it on, but and getting it on. Um, it just is so, so frustrating. And I'm just wanting to see what we can do to solve that. Okay, thank you. Notice that I let this go a little long, because again, we have to go back and chop out some of this that was just way too loud. When it's cut off at the edges like that, it's just too loud. So we're gonna call this Joe on the line. So we're just looking at her voice. If we could play this and you could hear her, it's just her voice. Now, if we try to play it after we put it in this advocacy program, I'm going to go ahead and meet you because there's a lot of noise there. And again, I want to remind people this is an abbreviated kind of quick run through because we're trying to get to more. Now if I open that, it should have that. Oh, I'm looking for a WAV file. Gosh, Sherry, I'm trying to hurry too much. So we're putting this in, it will draw the great grid for her. Oh, it looks very much like Richard's. 
lot of metabolic issues. So if we were going to look at this, it would be this top high one here. Probably these three or four low ones. That's a low one right there. Now, this is in 1.4. This is genetic. This is a genetic range. And this one is 13. That's in an emotional range. Over here, this is in metabolism, and then this is long-term, these ones that are down. So the gray grid, the dark one, is where she should be. So if you were just going to guess, this high one, probably this one, maybe these two. Let's see what the computer says. Were you correct in what you thought would be taken? You've got some inflammation too, Joe. The stick piece right here is inflammation. We had Dr. Stephen Sanaka um, come and visit with us and send people over, and we showed him how in inflammation in the body is really where disease happens. And I think that's where inflammation system starts with. Um, inflammation. So there are foods that cause inflammation of the thyroid and inflammation of the cells. So to me, that's what part of yours looks like, inflammation. So we're going to look at, at your prostaglandins, which comes out of the liver cascade. Um, we're going to look at leptin, see if that's in here. So we've got our points. We're going to Insulin, I should fill this out. And we don't care kind of what you put in here, except you can't put slashes, except on the birthday. We're just kind of faking a birthday there. So we're going to save this in the GNS file. And then do the same thing, just opening that program. We've got two of them open. One of them opened over here on my other screen. Hmm, that's weird. And I, I'm going to put this program up online because so many of you have come in and said, we've got to put this one up. I think we'll put the link to Dr. Adia on there too. So we have the information. We have all the frequencies. And let's look at her protein, see if they're similar. So what came up for Richard? Adiponectin again. Boy, that's an incredible one. Um, IGF immunoglobulin. So that indicates some, ins uh, some inflammation. GPA related insulin resistance. I don't know what GPA related insulin resistance is, but write that down, Joe, so you can go on the internet and look it up. Increases insulin response sensitivity and blood sugar control. Yours is trying real hard. Hormone-related insulin resistance. This can be anything from B12 to homocysteine to estrogens to uh, problems with the adrenals. I would run you through inflammation and adrenals. So if you, you want us to do that, just get in touch with the office tomorrow and make arrangements for them to run you through several of these different programs and see what the commonality is. And we would also ask you to send us good prints because we kind of did this on the air with everyone listening. Insulin resistance gene, wow. Thyroid-related insulin resistance. So you've got it from adrenals, you've got it from thyroid, you've got it from hormones, uh, it's kind of all over. So normally we would just bundle this and send it to you. And if you will post your email or just get in touch with me later by my personal email, it's just sherryedwards at gmail.com. So you can hear me typing there. That's my email address that you could send me your email so I could send it on to you. Um, Phyllis, awesome. Feedback loop of the pituitary thyroid adrenal hormones. So a lot of people 
running up against this, but that adiponectin that is so intimately involved with leptin and it produces a bad chemical called orexin and that orexin tells your body to keep any and everything coming in. I think sometimes when I look at food, there's a problem. You know, all these breatharians, if we become a breatharian, we'd still, I think I'd still be overweight. I have tried four or five different programs. We did an insulin program in the pancreas. We did one on the liver. Um, we did one on vitamins and minerals. Three different programs. I, don't, I still haven't beat I've lost, I think it's 62 pounds. I can't remember. But I just, I got to that plateau and I can't get the rest of it off. So let's do the same thing and look at her hormone because it said it was hormone related. Minerals, vitamins, genes. I want to look at genes for her. Enzymes, amino acids. See what that looks like. So it looks for four or better. So it is kidney adrenal, because that's what the F notes are about. And look on seven on circulation, lack of circulation of delivering things where they ought to go. That's usually controlled by magnesium and the receptors. It opens and closes receptors. So we need to look at anything associated with magnesium. Copper is high. Copper is needed. It says you should, you're deficient in it. If it's high like this, it can mean that it's in storage in the system. Copper is needed for the use of molybdenum and calcium and the use of sulfur, which is very controlled by um, calcium. Let me see if I can find a clean map so we can look at some of this because Richard brought this up too. Clean methylation map. It's loading. Richard, you have the methylation map, don't you? This may not load for me because I've got so much open on my computer. The molybdenum right here needs copper to work and to translate these bad sulfurs into good sulfurs so that the body can use sulfur as a cofactor to the Krebs cycle. Minson says zinc also requires balancing by copper. I did not know that. Zinc and copper? Yes, I did because that's the schizophrenic stuff. But this cycle is available at heartfixer.com. Let me find that link for you so that everybody can go get that if they want and read about it. This is some of the immune testing that we look at and what we're going to look at in this next five-day course that we're doing. And it gives an explanation, about a 50-page paper on the explanation of all of this metabolism. Um, this is how the body uses its resources. And over here is the Krebs cycle. Thank you, George, for putting that in. The exact um, sort of address to the map is here, and we do have a computer program. We gave that away a couple of months ago, the mapping program. We're going to be using that again for this five-day course that's coming up. Insulin is high. Probably maybe not usable because some of the um, receptors aren't open for it to be useful. You know, that's in thyroid, the, the thyroid and the bio diet program. All of those receptors for GABA are in there. I don't think we have a category for receptors. Uh, testosterone, that's a male hormone that women can sometimes rely on 
when their own estrogen aren't doing what it's supposed to do. And it says it treats and prevents insulin resistance. And see, it's got exactly the same printout here. That means that's on your chart twice. So that's something to really look at and get back into balance. Hormones, we also have a program about hormones and the receptors for that. So your hormones are out of balance. Hormone-related insulin resistance, there it is. If we fix this, this may kick the rest of it in. And Joe, I don't know where you are, but let me know and we'll see if we have a bioacoustic practitioner near you. But there it is. That's probably your the issue. You know, all three of you have had this adducin out, which is hypertension associated with diabetes. And the controller for that is vasopressin. Protein kinase C may involve a progression of diabetic nephropathy. I'm going to look up that word and see what it means, unless somebody's posted it in there. So your kidneys are involved, your hormones are involved. Arginine, definitely involved in that map to detoxify the body. One is detoxify, two is free energy, three is replete your DNA, and four and five is how you use um, can't feed your extremities. N equals can't feed your extremities. Don't quite understand what that post is about, George. Oh. Like, well, this says nephropathy, which is kidney. So n neuropathy would be the nerves, but this says nephropathy. Judy, did anybody look it up and see if that's not a word, it's just a typo? That would be good. To find that. There's the cysteine that Richard had out. Glycine, Richard definitely has a problem with glycine. That's that stiff man syndrome. Syndrome starts with glycine, glutamic acid, glutathione. You do not want taurine low. That's a bad one to have low because it also feeds your heart and your thick muscles. You can buy that in the health food store, usually not alone. Somebody is posting some good stuff here. Means damage, that nephropathy means damage to the kidney. I still think it's misspelled. Nephrosis is non-inflammatory nephropathy. Good information, Judy. Thank you. Are you posting something weird, Anne? Is that why you're? Oh, it's at Wikipedia. Okay. So these are your amino acids, and if you've got several of them out, I would think that that problem um, with the copper might be keeping the amino acids from working because a lot of them need sulfur as a base. You can go to your local health food store and get some little strips, and it'll tell you if you're uh, pushing out the right kind of sulfur. Yes, thank you, Steve. Steve's always on the ready to give us good nutrition information. So since there are four, one, two, three, four amino acids, that's a lot of amino acids to have in stress. I would look at your sulfur issues. So uh, what if we don't have any intervention, what might happen here? There's that adducin again. Maternal diabetes. Calcium, like Richard says, calcium's gonna go. For those of you who are interested in what calcium does, we did a whole thing on happy hour about cancer and calcium. So you might wanna go look at that. It looks like Joe and Richard have very similar kinds of issues. Well, there's the zinc, insulin-like growth factor. 
that's in there twice, inhibits the ability of insulin to transport glucose. We would need to look at that for you. Because not only the activator, but the protein is in stress. There is a C sharp that um, for you practitioners, it's the same frequency as vicinic acid that transports fluids. I would bet that that number is going to come up in Joe's chart. To have that big number on the note correlate chart, I would just think her body isn't transporting the fluids as it should. Things aren't getting where they ought to be. Well, I hope this has given you lots of information. Danny's giving you information on how to take taurine. Oh, this has given you enough information to intrigue you so that when we put up the software, which will be right here on download, that you'll begin to download some of these free programs and start using them to help you and your family and help your bioacoustic, um, help set up a bioacoustic center. I want to go back to home, and I don't see how to get back home with all of this. Info about classes clinical. Well, that's really weird. Richard, can you tell me how to get back to home? Info classes. FAQ training. Those of you who want to jump into class, let us know. Well, let me look and see if I can go to classes and see what. Five-day profession. I don't know what's up here. But on this, on the front page, on the five-day professional, is there people out there that um, will commit to helping start a bioacoustic center in your community? We are going to provide you the um, lab model. What do we call this? Um, it's called a SMAD, a self-management auditory device. But it's the lab model that you would use to do bioacoustic tone trials. And it usually costs anywhere from fourteen to $1,800. And we're giving it away with our September class so that um, people who want to start these centers can um, hit the door running and get this up and moving really quick. This is information. I've got to sneeze. Hold on one second. <coughs> Should have turned off the microphone. Um, that helps me from sneezing. Thank you. Okay, this is the information about the class. There's more information on the front page. Um, enrollment applications are there. If you know people who want to take this class, now is the time because they'll get their lab model, they'll get their equipment for free. Um, so you're going to write to me and let me know where to send these reports. We'll put this up on the downloads for people under bonus. And let us know if you have more questions. We will be doing vocal profiling live. We're going to do Carrie about Syria. We're going to do Mike Adams about Syria and what he has found. I don't want to be political. But if you could go to our Facebook, just Sherry Edward, one word, you can see what Mike Adams has posted uh, about what the real toxins are and what's going on. It's an eye opener. And we're also going to deal with some other political people who may not uh, be telling the truth. Maybe, Richard, we can do that. If you guys have ideas for show, let us know. 
we're going to show you how we came to this conclusion. Here we're giving people information, but on the vocal profiling live, people have asked us to uh, show them how to do these interpretations. And we're going to be using Nano Voice if you want to download that. That's also on the site for free for you new people who are with us. I'll see if I can take us there. And there's a, a class to show how to use it. So there's profiles also on the class. We're doing this because we think people have a right to know what we're getting into and who's telling the truth and who isn't. And we're going to expose them on Vocal Profiling Live. So we will see you next week. That was a very quick hour. Thank all of you for being here. For those of you who want to grab all the stuff in the chat, click in chat, do Control A, grab everything, Control C, that will copy it. Go open a Microsoft Word. There's always lots of information. And you can keep the chat. We went over a little bit. I hope no one minds. And we'll see you next Tuesday for Vocal Profiling Live. We have a advanced class on Sunday for all of you practitioners. I hope all of you can join us. It's going to be um, very revealing, and it will help shortcut your life. Oh, your bioacoustic life, I should say. I didn't say that right, but shortcut the time you have to spend um, figuring things out. Well, acoustically. Hope all the rest of you, all your new people, go to our site, soundhealthoptions.com, and see you later.